quick with the news came out that uh, you had a problem with the first problem you came for. I think the question for many people's mind is, what is the problem? Or, you know, what does he do? Right. Uh, and I guess uh, within the Catholic Church, that he is uh, therefore now an advisor, both advisor to the Holy Father. And I think it's a great pride for us as Catholics that many religious leaders from other faiths are facing many problems that one of our own is now a that is a beautiful thing, isn't Indeed. it? Indeed. I mean, we are supposed to be one of the most multi-religious countries in the world. Indeed. And to have other faith leaders to be happy for us, I think that's an amazing, amazing thing. Indeed. And I think the Catholic Church in Singapore and Archbishop William himself personally mm. is very invested in this to ensure that Singapore, though small we are and yet so pluralistic, no. to have all our faiths, all our racial groups living in harmony. Mm. And the Catholic Church wants to play a key role in that. And we see that in a lot of the interactions that uh, His Eminence has with our local religious leaders, right. in our annual Christmas dinners that we host for them, and for all of them to come participate, and you see that friendship that they have with Him. I think that's really a moment uh, that we can all be proud of when we see Him on Saturday receiving His bread. Absolutely, absolutely. I think a lot of people are truly excited but they're also, I think, a little unsure of what, uh, you know, all this means for us. And so with that, what will the office of a cardinal now mean for the Archdiocese of Singapore? I mean, as you said, first time in 200 years, we, we have, no, you know, nothing on hindsight, you know, to look at, actually. Indeed. Uh, but within our region, we see quite a number of our Asian bishops becoming cardinals. That's correct. Perhaps that is uh, something that we can look to, to understand the role that Cardinal William will play. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing we must acknowledge as uh, a diocese in Singapore is we may see him less. We may see him less. Right. He is fully committed to his flock in Singapore, but he now has an added dimension to his role. Indeed. He is shepherd not only to the local flock, but assisting our chief shepherd here to look after his flock internationally. He might be called to certain offices, he might be called to lead certain initiatives on behalf of the Holy Father, and because of that, we might see less of him. But right. it is something that we should also be proud of and be willing to give our bishop to the world and to the entire Catholic world, not just to our Archdiocese. That's the first thing I suppose Catholics in Singapore will have to do mm. to allow our Archbishop, or in a sense, for him to be given so that he can be the hands and feet of the Holy Father in wherever the Holy Father needs him. Indeed. And we see it with, uh, for example, Cardinal Tarkley in Manila. Right. He was uh, a Cardinal Archbishop of Manila for mm. uh, some time, but he's now taken on uh, a more uh, significant role uh, in the Roman Curia. Right. Uh, and uh, of course, different Cardinal Bishops uh, will play different roles. Some will be focused very largely on their diocese, yeah. but because of that additional element, we must be willing to let go of the person we love so much Absolutely. in our local church and allow his passion to be seen in the rest of the Catholic world as well. I think with that also will come expectations of what the office should be doing or should be, or the man himself. So how would he, you know, take this then, you know, uh, it, it could seem like he's all alone in this. Well, I think um, for all our religions, our clergy, uh, often we forget that despite their very public role, yeah. it can sometimes be a lonely one. Mm. Right? Because they take on the burdens of their flock, they take on the worries of their flock, and they want to bring that love of Christ to them, to him. So, uh, when Archbishop William becomes Cardinal on Saturday, I think what we should firstly offer to him is our prayers, our support and our love. And through that, he can truly exercise his office, both as uh, continuing as our Archbishop and also as a Cardinal Prince of the Church, acting on behalf of the Holy Father. So, uh, 
what are the expectations? I think we might arrive at a point where we end up having an over expectation of what a cardinal is. is uh, and that is the worry. Indeed. He is not suddenly a superhero. Right. Uh, and I'm quite certain, having known him for over a decade, in his great humbleness, yeah. he doesn't see himself in that frame. And even though now he may be wearing a cloak sometimes. But that cloak is a cloak of humility. <laughs> Absolutely. Rather than a cloak of power. And that we should see within that context. The weight that he bears on his shoulders are now greater. And so for us, we should help to lessen it. For us as laity, for us as his co-workers in this wonderful field, uh, we should assist him with our gifts, our talents, our support, so that his yoke is lighter. Indeed. And by working alongside with Cardinal William, I think we can truly achieve his aim uh, for the Archdiocese of Singapore to be vibrant, to be evangelistic. And that's a role not just for him, it's for all of us to share it. Right. Because it's very easy for us to look at him now and say, oh, he's a cardinal and therefore, snap my fingers, everything gets done. Uh, but it doesn't work that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Even Absolutely. the Holy Father <laughs> yeah. has his difficulties and challenges indeed. as well. Indeed, indeed. For you personally, I mean, you've involved personally in matters of state, but your heart's very close to the church as well. So looking at this whole development, what would your prayer be for him? Well, my prayer for uh, Cardinal William, it's really that he continues to play that role as a compassionate, humble, and yet charismatic lead to bring not just Catholics, but mm. also inspire Singaporeans mm. to serve with all of our hearts. I mean, for a person in his office, I consider it for him a great burden yeah. uh, and he has said so a couple of times as well he has but it is something that he bears with great humility and says this is a burden that christ has given to me and therefore i shall bear it willingly and that's something that should truly inspire all of us in our daily lives mm. whether or not we are catholics or otherwise we are often saddled with different sorts of challenges mm. we look at them and say this is a yoke that I'm willing to bear, mm. and I think through that sacrifice, I can achieve something for others, not just for myself. And I think that's something that I'll continue praying for, and that Cardinal William will truly have the support of his Catholic flock in Singapore, the wider community in Singapore, for him to achieve his mission, and for him to truly shine as a light of Christ for all. That is our prayer for him, indeed. Alex, thank you so much for all your time thank and you. for being with us. And for you, our dear listeners and our viewers at home, we thank you for joining us in this special consistory series from Rome. We will continue to bring you more updates, so stay with us. So, dear friends, on the 27th of August, as you have heard, Pope Francis appointed and created 21 new cardinals for the Universal Church. And for the first time, in the 200-year history of the Catholic Church in Singapore, we have our very own Cardinal. And just a word about the commemorative book, That They May Live. This is a keystone document that sets out the pastoral view of Cardinal William Goh as he begins the next lap in the service of the Universal Church as guided by Pope Francis. Cardinal Goh's message sets out the four trusts of his cardinalate, which is faith in Asia, aid to the poorest and the least, climate action, and a new way of interreligious dialogue for human fraternity. Today's date is a special date. This Thanksgiving has been set aside specifically because of a specific significance for Cardinal William Goh. The Blessed Virgin Mary has always had a very special place in his heart, and in his vocation story to the priesthood, Cardinal Goh describes how his mother's devotion to praying the rosary at the Church of Our Lady of Lourdes and attending novena sessions at the Novena Church, or St. Alphonsus Church as it's known, had a profound impact on him as a young child. 
In fact, when he turned 16, he and his friends gathered 120 boys and girls to pray the rosary every evening in the church, among other prayer initiatives. Cardinal Gold believes that none of this would have been possible without the intercession and help of our Blessed Mother. And so today, the Nativity, or the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary, is indeed a significant day for our Cardinal Go. with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. On 27th August 2022, Pope Francis officially installed Archbishop William Go as Cardinal. Here we see Cardinal William Go of Singapore, the first time ever that a Cardinal has been appointed to this island city of Singapore. I have come to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. The mission of Jesus poised between fidelity to his people, to those whom the Father has given us, and at the same time, an openness to all peoples. The term cardinal, cardinale, it means a hinge of a door. So the cardinals are like the hinges, where they are hinged to Peter, to the Pope. So they assist the Pope in his universal governance. Everyone is coming to the tomb of St. Peter. We are also mindful that Rome is where St. Paul gave his life. Both have laid down their lives for the faith. They have given life to a church that is now spread throughout the earth. And it's like coming home. We have a cardinal who needs to be very mindful of the blood of the martyrs. Whenever he dons that red hat and his entire robe as cardinal, it's almost a reminder to follow Christ to the end. I was praying and asking the Lord to give me the strength to do His will and most of all, to grant me the wisdom to lead the people of God and to see how can I contribute best to the growth of the Universal Church. And I know that this depends on His grace alone, not within my strength and I said to myself to just to surrender my life to him. Seeing Archbishop being elected to become a cardinal is also very exciting for me because I think he has always been someone that I looked up to. This person who is so on fire for his faith in God and for his love for his people too. That even now when he is elected as a cardinal, he's still humble to follow God's will and not his own. I remember him as somebody coming to visit his mother in St. Joseph's home every Saturday with a packet of fishball noodles. And I always tell him that there is truly a filial son who knows the mother, what she likes, and he comes faithfully every Saturday for her. When I had the Emmy ordeal, my mother took me to see him. I was just crying out to him. And I remember it was Novena Church. He was expected there to do the Mass. He messaged to say, I'll be praying to Our Lady for you before the Mass. In the busyness of the day, he would take a moment to remember and pray for me. I was so moved and so grateful. Serving the Bishop all these years and witnessing his tireless efforts in renewing, invigorating our church in Singapore with his vision, many joys also. He also had to endure hardships, trials, tribulations, you know, and willingness to lay down his life for the church, the flock of Christ, for all of us. I know many of you are happy for me, but I think this happiness cannot be simply because I've been given some honour by God and through the Holy Father. But I think more importantly, it's an honour because we are called and recognized to be able to do more for the Universal Church. Guided by Pope Francis's vision, Cardinal Go shares his personal view moving forward in four main areas, growing the faith in Asia, 
bringing humanitarian aid to the poorest and the least, caring for our common home, and promoting inter-religious dialogue. Coming from the Malaysia-Singapore Bishops' Conference region, I will see what I can contribute to the promotion of faith in Asia. He will contribute not only his personal capacity, his experiences in Singapore will also then, through him, be presented to others. And he, in turn, will learn from others and influence the course of development of the church in Singapore. Those in the third world country, people are poor, people are deprived. The only way to proclaim the gospel is through humanitarian aid. If you've experienced God's love and mercy, we want to share that love with others. We begin to see the face of Jesus in those who are suffering. We begin to reach out to them. It's personifying the love of Christ to everybody, regardless of language, religion, ideology, to bring the church, which is the love of Christ, to all. Those who are united must also be concerned, not just for humanity, but also for the environment. We would expect our Catholics as well to be leaders of how we manage the planet, how we protect the planet. And so I think it's also important to encourage Asia to have proper dialogue with other religions. And I think there will be a greater mutual understanding that we are already supportive of each other for the good of our people. It is only in partnership with others we can guarantee the existence and the presence of the Catholic Church. Singapore is in a very vibrant region. According to Pew Research, we are the most religiously diverse nation on earth. Evangelization in the cities with the Singapore flavor is something that we can offer and contribute to the region. The timing can't be better. We just celebrated our 200th anniversary of the Catholic Church in Singapore. And this is the 201st year. Catholic 200 SG and now with the Synod. And then we had the Archdiocesan Assembly. That clarity of coming together as the Diocese from Singapore. Under Archbishop and now Cardinal William Bo, there has been a lot of emphasis on involving the laity, restructuring the various organisation structures. There has been a growing movement of a Singapore church. Today, it would be good for us to meditate on the image of this fire and in its light to pray for the new cardinals. It is as if Jesus is handing us a lighted torch and telling us, take this, as the Father has sent me, I now send you. And so I ask you all for your prayers that you will continue to pray for me and to work with me. Because without you all, it would be impossible to do what we have been doing and what we can do even more. For our Cardinal William, this moment is really for him to carry the cross on behalf of our Singapore Church and also for the Universal Church. I really contemplate that moment when Mary was standing at the foot of the cross with Jesus. I really hope that all of us Singaporean Catholics can also accompany uh, Cardinal William on this journey of carrying this cross. The disciples, we look at the journey with Christ, it is all uncertain, it's all about going into the deep. I think we will never be ready, but I think that is not the question we should ask. I think the question to ask is, Lord, where are you leading us? It's about using your story, like what your woundedness, what your brokenness is, and how God has touched you in a very unique way. His healing is not just for you, but how can you reach out to someone else? We are asked to be more united, to be less divisive, to know more about our faith, to grow in our faith. So even those of you who are not blessed with great talents, but just the capacity to love and to serve and to embrace everyone, itself is the greatest of all witnessing that anyone can give. Because when they see us humble in service, they will know that God lives in us, in Christ Jesus. To His Eminence, this journey is not going to be easy. I really wish that you know that all of us are behind you and we love you very much. Continue to walk this journey in faith, in eminence. We, the priests in Singapore, we are also very much behind you. Heavenly Father, you have chosen your servant, William Cardinal Go, to be a shepherd of your flock. We pray that you bless his humility and compassion, grant him wisdom and right judgment, and bestow upon him strong health so that he may do your work. That through him, you may lead our Catholic Church in Singapore to become 
even more vibrant, more evangelizing, and more missionary. To give him the courage to stand up for your voice, for your will. That he may continue to carry the love that the Lord has given to him and be the face of Christ to whoever that he needs. And that more will be drawn to help him, not just in the mission of the local church, but in the needs of the universal church as well. So bless all of us to unite us in your love and help the church to also grow to be a prophetic sign of your presence in our world and heal the wounds and hurts in families so that they too can be a source of healing and blessing to the whole world. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so, dear friends, dear sisters and brothers, with great joy, I ask you to please stand for the entrance hymn to the Mass.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, I now invite Monsignor Ambrose Vaz to read the papal bull, which records that his eminence was appointed to the College of Cardinals. Princes, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, the Venerable William Seng Chai Go, Archbishop of Singapore, elected Cardinal of the Roman Holy Roman Church, salutations and blessings. In you, Venerable Brother, we have found outstanding gifts of brilliant merit to the Catholic Church. In this consistory, we enjoin you to the collegial scarlet and by our apostolic power, we will appoint you Cardinal Presbyter. With all the rights and offices of cardinals proper to your order, we assign to you the distinguished church of our affectionate city, Holy Mary, Queen of Peace, on the shore of Ostia. Moreover, while we are filled with exceeding joy that having been drawn into the Senate of the Catholic Church, you will be a helper for us in the excellent conduct of our affairs for the honor of the Roman See, sustained by our benign God. We also pray for you that he may strengthen you with his gifts of grace and assistance. Given at Rome in the Lateran on the 27th day in the month of August, on the memorial of Saint Monica, in the year of the Lord, 2022, the 10th year of our pontificate. Signed, His Holiness, Pope Francis. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May, al May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
us pray. In part to your servants we pray, O Lord, the give of heavenly grace, that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those for whom the birth of her Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Dear friends, we now have the liturgy of the word. A reading from the prophet Micah. The Lord says this, You, Bethlehem, Ephrata, the least of the clans of Judah, out of you will be born for me the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. The Lord is therefore going to abandon them till the time when she who is to give birth, gives birth. Then the remnant of his brothers will come back to the sons of Israel. He will stand and feed his flock with the power of the Lord, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure, for from then on, he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand to welcome the words of the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Are you holy virgin Mary and most worthy of all praise? 
for the Son of Justice, Christ our God, was born of you. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how Jesus Christ came to be born. His mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But before they came to live together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a man of honor and wanting to spare her publicity, decided to divorce her informally. He had made up his mind to do this when the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people, people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing as His Eminence venerates the Gospel. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening we are gathered here to celebrate our thanksgiving to God for giving the church a cardinal. I have chosen the feast of the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary for this Thanksgiving Mass simply because Mary has been for me truly a blessed mother, a devoted disciple of the Lord, and most of all, Mary who has taught me to be true to my vocation as a priest. Indeed, Mary was chosen from among all women not because of her merits. She was an ordinary woman, one of the Anawims, that means among the poor. And yet God chose her to be the mother of the Saviour. And truly, as we celebrate this Thanksgiving Mass, my sentiments are also that of Mary. When she was chosen to be the mother of the Saviour, she said, my soul magnifies the Lord. For the Lord has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And so too, I must say the same thing. Because compared to Mary, I'm totally nobody. I'm just an ordinary man like most of you. I'm also a sinner like most of you. Maybe some don't consider themselves as sinners, but we are sinners too. And therefore, for God to choose me to be a cardinal, certainly it is beyond my expectation. It's a very humbling experience because I'm sure there are many more people in the world, much holier than me, much more brilliant, could have been chosen. 
But the truth is, my dear brothers and sisters, God's plan is mysterious. His choice is mysterious. He often chooses the small, the significant, to radiate His glory. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, now that I'm elevated to be a cardinal, people address me as your eminence. I must clarify this honorific address. Otherwise, you would begin to think in worldly terms. Why do people call the cardinal your eminence? Not because of his uh, achievements, not because we want to elevate the cardinal to a greater glory. That's not the reason. When you call the cardinal your eminence, you are actually reminding him of the eminent position that he holds in church, in society, and in the world. Therefore, he must be conscious that whatever he says, whatever he thinks, whatever he does, will have grave implications for good or for bad. So, to be called your eminence means simply that we have been given a position of influence. And this is true for all of you here who hold political, religious, or corporate powers. Every office is not so much to extol the person himself because we don't hold the office forever. <laughs> Sooner or later, we have to retire. But the office that is bestowed on you is to remind you of your responsibility, that you have to use your position in such a way to influence the world for the better, for the building of humanity. It's not about ourselves. When the Holy Father mentioned my name as one of the cardinals that he would create on August 27, Many people ask me, even the press ask me, why did the Holy Father choose you to be a cardinal? I really do not know. And I never asked him for the reasons as well. But I think he doesn't know the reason as well. <laughs> because the, the truth is, I believe the Holy Father, in choosing me, also, it's a question of faith, a matter of faith. That he believes that somehow God will unfold his plan in my life. What should I do as a cardinal? In fact, this is the question I do ask myself since the day I was appointed. What am I called to do? I'm already the Archbishop of Singapore in the Catholic Church. And I've been building the people into a vibrant, evangelistic, missionary group, community. What more can I do as the cardinal? And so it is important, again, for us to come back to the point that I mentioned about being in an eminent position. As a cardinal, I'm the head of the Roman Catholic Church. But the head does not move or cannot work without the body. So, even as I'm elevated to be a cardinal, to be in that eminent position, it is so too for the Catholic Church. Not for the Catholic Church only, but even for the whole of Singapore. Because now Singapore, everybody knows there is a cardinal. <laughs> and it's surprising because Singapore is just, as it is often said, a little red dot, you know. And this is the little red hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
This is where I think we are being challenged. As a church, as a country, now we are called to be truly the sword of the earth, the light of the world. If we are elevated, as I have said, God has a purpose. He is choosing us to be His instruments of love, of mercy, of compassion. And so if you ask me what I should do as a gardener in leading the entire community forward, firstly, for us Catholics, the church is a sacrament of love and unity. That is the most important mission of the church, to promote unity and love among all of humankind. That is the basic mission of the church. And of course, ours is a spiritual mission in the sense that we believe very strongly that the world would be united if everyone truly believes in God. With God, the sacred becomes the principle by which a person responds to God's mercy, love, and compassion. And so it is the Holy Father's wish that we who live in this world that is so fragmented, so divided, especially in today's time, where the world has become so polarized, this is where it's a challenge not just of the church, but of governments, of community leaders, how to hold society together. I'm sure many of you know that just a few days ago, or just today just ended, the government held the conference, international conference on cohesive societies. This is certainly in the right direction. How do we build cohesive society? That is why the Holy Father, in promoting the church as a sacrament, a sign of love and unity, the Holy Father always embraced life condemns wars, division, discrimination, oppression in every form. And this is where I think it's important for us. If we were to build a cohesive society as church, as a community, we also must be leaders in promoting harmony, solidarity among all human beings. Very importantly, we are called to foster brotherhood and solidarity among all, regardless of race, language, religion, or culture. This is a very important task because people will know that we are truly believers in God when we show the face of God's mercy and love to others. And that's the reason why if we want to promote solidarity among all human beings, one of the most important things that we have to continue to work hard is the promotion of interreligious dialogue. In Asia, we host all the major religions in the world. And it's important that for us to live in peace, in unity, there must be harmony among religions. Again, in Singapore, we have really, through the help and support, of course, of the government, we have really become an icon of religious harmony in the world. And this is something we need to continue to work on it. Because all of us, regardless of what religion you come from, we are all children of God. At the international conference, I've, something came to me when there was this man. He was from the humanistic society. He came to greet me. And I began to realize that even promoting interreligious dialogue is not sufficient to bring about cohesive society. I think we religious leaders must be ready to engage those who are humanistic, 
those who are secularists. Because otherwise, we cannot build a united society. And I know there are many humanists. In fact, those who belong to the humanist society, they are equally concerned about the common good of humanity. It's just that there are different approaches, different perspectives. So I think in all humility, we need to engage everyone as well. But there is also another thing. I suppose we can truly help is also to continue to work with the government in promoting harmony, mutual respect. And I think the beautiful thing in Singapore, we always say that we have a secular government, but we are multi-religious, multi-racial state. And I think this is something, again, that is beautiful and which we need to strengthen this emphasis. Because I think also that the government must see us as partners. In fact, government and religions, if we are truly people of faith, we all work for the common good of humanity, of society, according to what the Lord has given to us. Different ways, but everything must hold together. Society cannot do without religion, but religion cannot, so to, so to speak, without a government that is responsible to bring society together. This is what we must do. The third thing we must do, I believe as a cardinal, is also to promote a gracious society, which is also certainly the wish of every government, a society that is compassionate, inclusive, and embracing of all people of different orientations, even sexual orientation. I think it is important for us that somehow we need to journey as what the Holy Father is asking of us in the church when he started this the process. We need to journey with each other so that we can help a person and together search for the truth, search for the light. I think unless society is inclusive, we will not be able to make much progress. And this is where, again, the church is always very concerned about those who are marginalised, those who are poor, those who are being discriminated. So, I'm grateful that in the Catholic Church, we have two big umbrella organisations, um, Caritas, that looks after the poor and the marginalised in Singapore, within Singapore, and carries that reaches out beyond the shores of Singapore. I think it is these humanitarian efforts in trying to help the poor, in trying to make not just Singapore better, but the world better, this is where we can truly speak about uh, building a united society. And finally, since I'm a cardinal in Asia, and the Bishop's Conference is here, I better say something about Asia. Because uh, as a Bishop of Asia, as a Cardinal of Asia, of course Asia would be my priority. And this is where we need among ourselves, in, for the Asian Church, how to strengthen the faith of our people. I always tell the government, you know, if you want us to cooperate with the projects and the initiatives of the government, we'd be so happy. But then we need to get our people excited about the faith first. If they're not excited about the faith, don't ask them to do anything because they won't come. If they don't come to church, even if we have all these initiatives, would they come? They won't come because they are self-centered, individualistic. And so it's very important that even as for the Asian church, we need to strengthen the faith of our people, give them a deep encounter with the Lord, and continue to help them to grow in their faith. And of course, you know in Asia, Asia is a very diverse continent. Very, very diverse. Lots of challenges. Sometimes religious persecution, political instability, 
Uh, we have countries that are very rich and some very poor. They have all kinds of issues. And I think as a cardinal, we will have to, I will have to see how we can contribute uh, to the formation of our Catholics in terms of research, in terms of development, in terms of technology, and in terms of, of course, interreligious dialogue. To see how we can really bring the church forward. And, well, I hope, I hope only, I always tell the people, you know, they say, wow, your country is so good, huh? All the religious leaders get together and we work together with the government very well. No problem, no problem. We work with the government. Because the government do not see us as competitors or as uh, threats. We are working together because we have the same common goal of building a better society. But many governments, unfortunately, in Asia, do not treat religion always as partners. This is the greatest challenge. And perhaps this is something that Singapore and myself coming from Singapore can perhaps contribute to see how we can, Asian uh, countries can better their relationship with the governments so that together they can make progress. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, all that I've said uh, would not be possible because I think there is need a change of mindset. We Singaporean Catholics, uh, I must confess, a little bit parochial minded. It is about our church, it's about growing. Yes, we have done lots of social work outside, but I think we can do more. We should learn to go beyond Singapore, beyond our people, beyond our churches, and reach out to those people outside Singapore as well. Because we have benef we benefit from the resources that we have, and we need to reach out. That is why a change of mindset among our leaders, lay leaders, priests, religious leaders would be very important so that we will see beyond ourselves and not just confine to our own uh, needs alone. And all these things, my dear brothers and sisters, requires us to make sacrifice. That is why the Holy Father gave me a red, a scarlet, uh, we call this a juquette or a skull cap if you want to use another name. What's the reason? When he gave me that skull cap, the beretta, it means to say I must be ready to die for the people of God, for the church, for humanity. That is why my motto as a bishop is Ud Vivan. Ud Vivan simply means taken from John 10, 10, 10, 10 that they might live. If other people have to leave someone to die. Lah. <laughs> so, for us who are leaders, whether in the political world, religious world, we have to die so that others will live. If we want to live, others will die. So, that is why political leadership, religious leadership, corporate leadership is a great sacrifice. But it is in giving our lives to others that we ourselves find a fulfillment, a joy, a meaning that no amount of glory, power, and money can buy. And so, I conclude by saying this. People ask me, what did the Holy Father talk to you? What did He say? You no, know, a lot of capos around. Huh? So, they ask, what did the Holy Father say? He said, pray for me. So, since He said, pray for me, I will say the same thing to you. Please pray for me. That is the greatest thing you can do for me because without the grace of God, Without the wisdom, without the humility, without the fortitude, I don't think I can really make a good leader. So I only ask one thing from all of you, please pray for me. Thank you. So let us stand for the prayer of the faithful. The Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary marks the dawn of our salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and reminds us that God seeks to make a new beginning with us. At the start of this new responsibility entrusted to me and to the local church, let us turn with confidence to God our Father as we entrust our cares and needs to His providence and love. Woman 
，求主帮助他们，引导教会，在我们应该做的事，以及我们所应关注的地方，指引我们，为明日建立一个充满活力、有使命感。和广传福音的教会，我们同声祈祷。我们为枢机主教吴成才祈祷，他被天主指定成为中途继承人之一，祈求主赐予他。超见、刚毅、明达和孝爱的神恩，使他能有效且温和的侍奉，使教会加强他在世上的盛世。我们同声祈祷，求主抚听我们。நமது திருவைக்காக மன்றாடுவோம் ஞானத்தின் இருப்பிடமான அன்னை மரியாவின் வழிகாட்டுதலின்படி இவ்வுலகில் இறையரசை கட்டி எழுப்புவதில் கவனம் செலுத்தவும் இறை பணியிலும் மறை பணியாலும் கடவுளின் நன்மைத்தனத்திற்கு சாட்சியாக இருக்கவும் வரமருள வேண்டும் என்று இறைவா உம்மை மன்றாடுகிறோம் ஆண்டவரே எங்கள் மன்றாட்டை கேட்டருளும் உலக தலைவர்களுக்காக மன்றாடுவோம் அவர்கள் அனைத்து மக்களின் பொது நலனுக்காக பணியாற்றுவதில் உயர்ந்த நன்மையை நாடவும் எதிர்நோக்கு நீதி அமைதி நிறைந்த உலகை கட்டி எழுப்புவதற்கான தங்களது தீர்மானத்தில் நன்கு பலப்படுத்தப்படவும் வரமருள வேண்டுமென்று இறைவா உம்மை மன்றாடுகிறோம் ஆண்டவரே எங்கள் மன்றாட்டை கேட்டருளும் For the church in Asia, that we, as the people of God, may embrace the hopes and the wounds of the Catholic faith and contribute to giving life to the churches in the region through our vocations and talents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the social mission of the Church, that in following the call of Pope Francis to be the field hospital, the Singapore Archdiocese through Caritas and Caris may be strengthened in working with all humanitarian organizations and sister churches to reach out to the discarded so the abandoned in Singapore and Asia may feel the embrace of Christ and recover their dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For interreligious harmony, that the Archdiocese of Singapore may give life to the dialogue of life as called for by the Church and encourage interreligious encounters that reach communities, youth, schools, and so foster a civilization of love in Asia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in priestly and religious vocations, that parents will be generous and encourage their children who may discern the God's will, that those who hear God's call respond courageously. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And now for our own intentions.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, you know our needs even before we pray. Graciously grant these our petitions which we place before you through the intercession of Mary, our mother, that we always render glory to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. As we prepare our offertory procession, I'm happy to share that the offertory gifts will be brought up to the altar by members of His Eminence's family. Also, today's collection will be taken for the mission and spread of the gospel.
Please stand, dear friends. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Sit or kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. A gentle reminder, dear friends, that only baptized Catholics can receive Holy Communion. Also, kindly follow the instructions of the wardens as we come up to receive Holy Communion.
Isan. May your church exalt, the Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries. As she rejoices in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And in the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. And now, dear friends, wishing to be close to the people of God, His Eminence will now process outside of the church and make his way to the tentages outside to impart his blessings upon the people. And if you have any religious articles, you may raise them up so that they may be blessed. Please be seated.
Oh.
a token of his love and devotion for our Blessed Mother, His Eminence has placed a bouquet of flowers at a shrine. At this point in time, dear friends, I invite His Eminence, William Cardinal Go, to address this. So thank you for waiting patiently because there is a big group outside of this church who has not enjoyed the air conditioned. <laughs> and uh, it is important that uh, I have to go out to reach out to them because the Holy Father reminds us, as a cardinal, we come not just only for the rich and the powerful, but also for the ordinary and the poor. Because the cardinal is for all. And so, to end this Mass, I'd like to express my deep gratitude to Almighty God for the many graces and providences received during this process since my appointment to the College of Cardinals was made known in May. I also want to express my grateful thanks to Blessed Mother Mary for her powerful intercession and for inspiring me to walk in the footsteps of her son. And this evening, I'm honoured by the presence of Prime Minister Li Xiang Lung and Madam Ho Ching, my brothers, the Archbishops and Bishops from the Catholic Bishops' Conference, Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei especially, Bishop Sebastian, the President of the Conference, who have set aside valuable time to travel here to consolidate the Mass with me. We also want to thank the Chief Justice, Mr. Sundaresh Menon and Mrs. Sundaresh Menon for their presence. And also we want to thank the following Minister, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth and Second Minister for Law, Mr. Edwin Tong and Mrs. Edwin Tong, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan, and his spouse, Minister for Home Affairs and Minister for Law, Mr. K. Shamungan, Minister for Social and Family Development, and Second Minister for Health, Mr. Masogos Jukefi, and all honourable members of government for their personal well wishes. In a very special way, I'd like to thank all religious leaders here, executive members of the IRO, and leaders from Christian churches in Singapore. Thank you for your support, your encouragement and prayers for me. And also I'd like to thank in a special way all my fellow priests who have walked and prayed with, with me throughout the process. The chairpersons and staff of the many Archdiocesan Commission officers and organizations who labor tirelessly to make our church truly vibrant, evangelizing and missionary. And finally, my heart, great, heartfelt gratitude to the Thanksgiving Solemn Mass Organizing Committee in particular the co-chairs, Father Verilin Chiong, Lawrence Chong, and the 400 volunteers who came together to make this event possible. And of course, we want to thank Father Christopher Lee, the staff and volunteers of this parish for the generous support and use of this church. The liturgical committee, the combined choir, the extraordinary minister of communion from North District parishes and the seminarians, benefactors and supporters of this event. Finally, I want to thank each and every one of you who turned out tonight, especially those of you who waited patiently at the tent. Um, don't worry, I will be coming to greet you all after the mass and to take, of course, photos with you. So please be patient, uh, wait for another half an hour and I should uh, be with you. So please uh, be patient. And as I've said, this Cardinally, it's not for myself, 
but truly it is for us as church and the Holy Father wants me as the leader of this church to lead the entire Church of Singapore to do a greater mission to serve the universal church, to serve humanity at large and to make this world a more loving, compassionate, inclusive and loving place. So thank you to one and all. I'm truly, truly very grateful from the depths of my heart to know how much you love me, how much you support me, the prayers that have been uh, truly outpouring. And I can truly uh, say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dear friends, I invite you to stand as we pray the Salve Regina, the Hail Holy Queen.
Dear friends, His Eminence will take his leave with Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung. We also ask you that uh, you remain seated as the ministers and CJ and our guests make their way out. Thank you very much for your patience. Dear friends, for joining us this evening, you may take your leave slowly. For those of you who have driven, please take the Chestnut Drive Gate out. Thank you very much. God bless and love you all. <laughs>